as many of us watching these reports, uh, ESMO, of course, is highly enriched for oncology, but uh, dealing in, in this COVID epidemic world and why this was, uh, again, a virtual meeting, um, what about um, COVID issues? And I thought might as a, as a practicing hematologist, oncologist, um, mentioned something with the vaccine and vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, similar to HIT syndrome with heparin, similar to TTP. Thus far, it seems to be virtually only in the adenovirus, so not the mRNA virus vaccines, but in the adenovirus developed vaccines. It's extremely rare. It uh, seems to be more common in women than men. It was mostly throm uh, cerebral venous thrombosis. When you the platelet count should be very low. And the reason is when you check the patient's arm for a platelet by drawing a blood, they're not there, they're everywhere else. They're clotting in the small vessels and particularly in the brain. You would suspect it by doing an ELISA, E-L-I-S-A, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, just like you do for HIT syndrome. If that's positive, you do need to anticoagulate, preferably without heparin-based anticoagulation to try and avoid that whole potential for a crossover syndrome in case you may be dealing with TTP, which we hope this is not. So the take home here, just a brief mention for vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpose, similar to HIT syndrome, Suspected more of the adenovirus related developed vaccines, play the cancer low, and cerebral venous thrombosis brain is the more often presentation. So I hope you enjoyed a bit of the ESMO results and a little teaser of hematology. I'm Dr. David Henry, Pennsylvania Hospital. Pleasure to give you these reports today. So in my patients, I'm on equipoise, I think, for all three vaccines available in the States, the Pfizer, Moderna, and J&J, &J, we deal, of course, with a more immunocompromised patient population as practicing oncologists. And so perhaps the antibody response is more robust in the mRNA vaccines and the booster. So I guess I would choose, if given a choice, to stay with the mRNA vaccines and the J&J &J vaccines. Absent further data, it seems the way that might be playing out best for our immunocompromised patients.